to the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> tales are told of the old frontier days, the mysterious phantom figure of the plains is certain to be mentioned. Astride his great horse, Silver, he fought crime throughout the western United States. The deeds of the masked rider of justice have never been recorded in the written pages of history, but the memory of his exploits will last as long as the memory of the early west itself. And now, return with us once more to the thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, old fellow! There's trouble on Colonel Marbury's ranch. Tell him who's waiting for us. I'll sail Old Colonel Marbury retired from army life to take up ranching. But wounds suffered during his military career made it difficult for him to get around. His chief interest was his daughter, Betty. And his main hope was to see her happily married. When Bart Benson arrived, with credentials showing him to be the son of one of the colonel's friends in the East, he was made welcome. As the weeks went by, Benson took over more and more of the duties of the ranch, relieving the colonel, who was almost a cripple. As our story begins, we see Colonel Marbury and his daughter in the ranch house. I sort of hoped you'd get to like Lieutenant Benson real well, Betty. He's an army man, and I was his dad's best friend. I don't know why he still calls himself a lieutenant. He's not in the army now. Well, honey, same reason folks still call me colonel, I suppose. But tell me, how do you like him? Mm, he's all right, I suppose. That's the ticket. That's what I like to hear. I was talking to him this afternoon. We had quite a session. Yes? Yes, sirree. He didn't figure on staying around here for more than a couple of days when he arrived. But I persuaded him to stick. He's a big help to me. Mind if I come in? Oh, Bart, come on, come on in. I was just speaking about you, son. Yeah? Mind if I go to my room, Paul? Hey? Well, Don't I... Don't let me drive you out, Miss Betty. You're not. <laughs> Girls are funny, ain't they, Colonel? <laughs> I don't know why Miss Betty don't seem to like me. Oh, she learned to like you. It takes time. I hope you made your, your mind stick around, Benson. Well, I wouldn't like to make myself a burden, but if you feel I can help you... For God's sakes, yes. Ain't you helped me plenty already? Being a soldier instead of a cowhand, men don't like to do what I tell them. I give you leave to fire them that wouldn't take orders. I know. Did you do it? A couple of them. That foreman of yours resents my being here, though. Lem? Mm -hmm. Let him. Anytime he and you can't get along... Then he can go. That's the way I feel about it. Reckon he'll be telling things about me. What sort of things? Mm, I don't know. He's been saying things to the men, though. Like as not, he'll come to you next. That don't sound like Lem. Why don't it? I've known him ever since I come here. He's never said a thing that ain't true. To the best of your knowledge. Eh? See here, Benson. 
You seem to know things about Lem. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe so. Think he'd lie about you just because he resents your being here? Colonel, you've been in the Army. You've been around men. You ought to know that a man will go to most any lengths when he's spurred by jealousy or fighting to hold his job or his girl. His girl? Just so. You better ask Miss Betty about that. Well, I never suspected anything of that sort. I didn't think you did. Betty! I'd assume you didn't tell her that I said anything. She'll know where I heard it anyhow, so what's the difference? Betty, I want to see you. Yes, Paul? Come in here. Yes? What's this about you and Lem, the foreman? I don't know. What is there about it? You in love with him? Oh, I'm not in love with anyone. He love you? Oh, I don't know. He hasn't said so. So you don't figure on telling me anything, eh? Paul, oh, there's nothing to tell. That ain't true. Pa, do you mean you don't believe me? I want to know about you and Lem. I won't have you fall in love with a man as old as him and as unlikely to ever amount to anything. Oh, I never had any idea of falling in love with him. I'm taking the word of a soldier. Well, there might be good and bad soldiers, the same as anything else. Trouble with you, Pa, is that you've let yourself be hoodwinked and blinded by the smooth talk of Mr. Benson. Betty, Don't what? you bury me. Ever since you came here, you've been making trouble. You fired some of our best hands and got the rest of them mad at you. They're ready to leave. They've been replaced. And so can anyone else who don't agree with the way I do things. Bart is going to have charge of the ranch. Pa, oh, you're going stark staying crazy. I know what I'm doing. He's a soldier. Well, he's a poor one. He's lied about me and lied about Lem. And you're believing him against those you've known to be truthful all their lives. Bart is in charge and things will be like he says. Hey, Benson. What do you want here, Butch? That foreman, Lem. What about him? He's quit. Read off so mad he ain't even stopping for his pay. Lem, gone? Yes, sir. There. Now do you see, Paul? The best man you've ever had here. And this cheap sidewander has made him leave. Let him. It ain't my fault, Colonel, if he can't take orders. And that grinning, gaping, sneak-faced Butch. That's the style of men that are around here now. The kind that'll lick the boots of a conceited slicker like Bart Benson just to hold a job. No self-respecting rancher would hire him. They'd be crooks, only they ain't even the nerve for that. That'll do. You're darn right it'll do. It's more than I can stand. Now that even you have fallen for the slick-tongued rat, I'm leaving my own self. Betty? I mean it. Go to your room. I said I was leaving. Benson, have the men stand guard around the house. See that Betty don't get out. Yes, sir. You heard that, Butch. Have the boys stand guard. All right, Benson. I'll see you in a few minutes. Right. Now, Betty, you just try and get away and see what it gets you. You're making me a prisoner in my own house. Well, we'll see about that. Oh, Betty, now, wait a minute. Wait, I don't know what happened to Paul that he'd be so took in. <laughs> oh, that snake. Senorita. Oh, Chiquita. I wonder if... I wonder if you're still my friend. Si, Senorita. I your friend all time. I never forget how you saved my brother one time when the law would hang you. Do not cry. Well, it, it's just that I'm so mad and I can't do nothing else. They're going to keep me prisoner here, Chiquita, right here in my own house, and I won't stay. We talk it over, huh? Even, even Lem, the one man I knew I could count on, he's left. Left? Yes. Rode away with, without even stopping to speak to me. Who tell you he has left? One of those sneaking men that Benson hired. Oh. Chiquita, what is it? That... That is not the truth. What? No, senorita. He did not leave like that. What do you mean? What do you know about it? Chiquita see many things. I see men go ride on the plane. One of them, he is Lem. Yes? Soon there is the fight and two come back. One, he never come back. That one is Lem. He... He was murdered? See, si. Then, Chiquita, I must get away from here. If that beast Bart Benson will do a thing like that, and, and he must have been the one who arranged it, then he would do anything. He might even kill my father. Senorita, you must get away. You must ride someplace where you will be safe. But I can't get out of the house. It's being guarded. Perhaps we find the way. We shall see. <laughs> Just 
like what you said. Good. That removes the last chance of anyone squealing on us. Yeah. It's his own tough luck his ears were so big they heard Morn was healthy. Yeah. Now be sure the girl don't get away. I will. There ain't a chance of her escaping. Our taking over the range depends on me marrying her. Savvy? Sure. After she's my wife, it won't matter much what happens to the old man. He can die off any time he wants. <laughs> and maybe we can help the matter along some. <laughs> no reason why not. What's that? Horses. Something's going on by the corral. Come on. We'll see who's there. Stand where you are. Don't make a move or I'll shoot. The girl. It's a girl. Grab her. I got her. Not so fast, sir, Miss Penny. Hold her. Hold her. I got her. Thought you'd try and run away, huh? I got her now. What do you mean by this, Teddy? Thought she'd run away like you threatened, huh? Stubborn as a mule. She won't open her mouth. Well, I'm taking you back inside your father. I have a side of explaining to do to him for disobeying orders. Sides, it ain't wise for a girl like you to be riding off alone this hour of the night. When you hanker to ride, just let the boss know. He'll see you get the proper escort. Fool, pig! What the? This ain't Betty. No, I am not the senorita, you fool, for why you stop me? You're wearing Betty's clothes. Where did you get them? The senorita gave them to me. Is it business of yours? Get up there. Hey, boss. There's Betty. She's getting away. You fool. Stop. Stop or I'll shoot. Get after her. We can't let her escape. Get horses. Come on, Butch. Get horses and get going. <laughs> she ain't got the way. Out of scheme, she works. You little spitfire. You stole us to give her a chance to get away. To be sure. And I hope the senorita, she never come back. I'll deal with you later. Hurry up, Butch. Get after her. Get moving. Here's the horse for you, boss. We'll overtake her inside of 15 minutes. Get up, man. Get up. Marbury urged her horse to a dangerous speed across plains broken by gopher holes. Behind her thundered the horses of Bart Benson and Butch. It was only a matter of time until the stronger horses of the two men would overtake Betty's smaller mount. The men knew it and rode steadily in pursuit. There's a skipper in sight. That's all we need to do. Ain't but a matter of time, Benson. Her horse can't keep that pace for long. I know that pain of hers. Blame fool. How'd you ever think to get away with this sort of trick? We're closing in on her. Get up there. Get up. Come on. Come on. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Hey, Betty. You better stop. There ain't no use keeping on. We've oh, oh, oh. as good as got you now. Come on, Butch. Fast. Come on. Get up. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Who's that coming in from the west? I know. He's heading Betty off. Don't let him do it. Shoot him! Fill him! Don't let him get her! Don't shoot the girl! Come on, get her before that man does! Come on, come on, boy! Come on, get him! Get him, get him boy! Come on, come on, boy! Get him, boy! Come on, boy! curtain falls on the first act of tonight's Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. A man calling himself Bart Benson took over the management of Colonel Marbury's ranch, secretly killed the foreman and planned to marry the colonel's daughter, which would make the ranch his own on the colonel's death. 
Betty, however, escaped and was rescued by the Lone Ranger from Benson's pursuit. The masked man took Betty to his camp and heard her story. So that's how things stand at the ranch. Yes. I've told you everything in spite of the fact that you're an outlaw. Why do you think that? The engine you travel with and, and that man. But I'm not an outlaw. No. Him not outlaw. Him good friend. He proved a better friend than my own father. That's why I've been willing to trust you, stranger. Now, I can't understand your father's manner. You could if you knew him. Why? Father went to West Point. He was in the army most of his life. His best friend was a man named Benson, the father of this, this good-for-nothing Bart. Paul would take the word of a soldier over and above everything else. I see. But if, if you let me borrow a horse till, till I can get somewhere, I'll go on my way. Have you any idea of where you're going? Oh, what's the difference? I can't go back home again. But I don't... You must tell me. What is it, Tonto? Maybe Tonto got an idea. An idea? Oh. How long Bart Feller at ranch? Oh, it's been about... Six weeks, why? Oh, Tonto, I know what you're thinking about. Uh, how big, Bart Feller? How, how big? Is he as tall as I am? No, a couple of inches shorter. Is he heavily built? He's downright skinny. You know him? No. Then what was you asking? Maybe Tonto go there, see what Feller looked like, huh? Do that, Tonto, and Betty will return with you. No, I won't do that. I can't ever go back there. Very well, then there's nothing we can do. But don't you see? If I go back there now, I... I'll be treated worse than ever. My own father's turned against me, and and Chiquita. There's no telling what those men will do with her. For that reason alone, you must go back there. You told me there'd been a murder. Yes, poor Lem. Betty, you're shirking. The punishment of Lem's killers, the life of Chiquita, depends on you. Yes. And perhaps the life of your own father. But he... He is making a mistake. But is that reason for you to leave him when he needs you to show him his mistake? Go back there and agree to anything. Tonto will be close at hand in case you need him. That Tonto? Me, Tonto. Just shout and he'll be close enough to hear you. In the meantime, let me see what we can find. But tell me what you're going to do. Ride to an army post. Oh, Check I... up on a few things and then come to that ranch. Get your horse ready, Tonto. You're going to take Betty back. Accompanied by Tonto, the Lone Ranger's faithful Indian companion, Betty returned to the ranch. Her father was furious at her action, but Betty attempted an explanation. I just wanted to show you that you couldn't keep me prisoner. Now I've showed you, I'm satisfied. Mm. But who was this man who carried you away? What did Bart Benson say about him? All he could tell was that he rode a white horse and a fast one. He thought outlaws were chasing me, that's all, Paul. When he found they were our own hands and learned the truth, he sent me back. Well, you are back. Now, I hope you're satisfied. Paul, we just lost our heads and both said things we didn't mean. Let's start all over again. I I didn't mean to be harsh with you, Betty. But the idea of you and Lem... Lem's do... gone now. Don't that show that he didn't care much about me? Reckon so. Maybe you were wrong about Lem, and maybe I was wrong in the same way I sized up Bart Benson. Betty, he's a lieutenant in the Army. At least he was before he got out. I know. I admit there's times when he ain't all he might be, but the boy must be all right, or he wouldn't have been an officer. Oh, sure. I'd sure like to see you think serious about him. Well, I, I might think serious of him, Paul, if... If what? If uh, his men didn't try and punish Chiquita for helping me escape. I'll speak to him about that. I'll see that Chiquita don't get punished now. Good. You are, dear, when, when Bart isn't around to influence you. Now get to bed. There's been too blame much excitement for one evening. All we can do is wait and act the part. See, si, senorita. And pray for that masked man to help us. What is that? Huh? Masked man? Yes. Why? And an engine, you say? His name is Tonto? Yes. Senorita. Senorita. It will be all right. You wait and see. Betty obeyed Chiquita's advice, 
the Lone Ranger raced through the night toward the army post to the east. There he hoped to gain information that would serve his purpose. Come on, the silver old boy! Final happened for the next few days. Tonto, remaining in hiding, was secretly supplied with food by Betty. In the meantime, she adopted a more friendly attitude toward Benson, who was deceived by her seeming change of heart. It is night as our next scene opens. Benson is standing alone beside the corral, awaiting the return of Butch, who has gone to the house with a message for Betty. I will for a showdown. Looks like Butch coming back now. Right here, Watch. Yeah, it's me. I told the girl you wanted to see her here at the corral. She coming? She wanted to know what it was about. I didn't tell her. She'd be along in a minute as soon as she puts a wrap on. The horse is saddled and ready? Yep. All set and waiting. Good enough. She may put up a fight, but it won't get her no place. When we're on the way to town, I'll tell her she better go through with the wedding for her old man's sake. Uh-huh. Meanwhile, me and the rest will see if the colonel don't make trouble. That's the idea. Maybe the girl won't put up no fight at all. I hope she doesn't. But if she does, it won't help her any. It's high time we were married. Well, I'll be in complete control, especially when the colonel dies off. Yeah. <laughs> and that won't be long. There she comes. We'll meet the rest of the boys and see that they don't interfere. Right. I'll tend to things. Why couldn't you come to the house, Bart, if what you had to say was so important? Well, Betty, the truth is, uh, this is where we had to start from. The horses are waiting for us. Horses? For what? We're going to town to get married. T- tonight? No. With your father's consent, and he figured this would be the best way. I don't believe it. Hold on now, Betty. Take your head off my arm. No, we're heading for town. Please. Bart, listen to me. I, I'll tell you what we'll do. Well? Wait a few days. Let me get ready. I must get a lot of clothes fixed up. So and... you do care about me, huh? Well, that's all that's needed. I'll get married tonight. No, no, yeah. I... What's the difference? Remember, you're just stalling for time to give you another chance to run away. Let me go. Come on. Paul, help me. He won't be interested in helping you. I don't want to marry you. I won't marry you. You've got nothing to say about it. Now stop your struggling. Tonto, help. You, me stop him. Who's this? Me get him, you. Oh, you. Oh. Thanks. Thanks, Tonto. Look out, Tonto. There's others coming. Hey, boys, get that rat skin. We're coming. We're coming. Me fix him, you. Tonto, they've got guns. Be careful. Don't let them use them. Hang on to him. Yeah, I got him. Hang on. I'll get a rope on him. Don't you try and get away. Let go of me. Let me go, you rat. Hold him. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. He must have me. Come on. Help. 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 Drop the gun, Steve. All right. Are you all right, Tonto? Come me. Me all right. Sheriff, the engine was helping me. Bart Benson tried to make me go away with him. Bart Benson, huh? Is that Lieutenant Benson of the cavalry? That's me. You better take orders from me. I'm in charge of this outfit now. Yeah? What's the colonel say about that? He'll tell you. Can you prove that you're Lieutenant Benson? Of course I can. Well, we want to see that proof, Benson. We came here for that reason. Deputy... You go along with Benson till he gets his proof, then bring him to the house. Right. I'll get my credentials on the way to the house. If you want to see him, I'll show him to you. Benson went after his credentials, confident that Colonel Marbury would defend him and go on with the plans for the marriage. We see Benson after he's joined Betty, the sheriff, the masked man, and Tonto in the living room of the ranch house. Colonel Marbury is speaking. I don't know what's behind it, Bart, but the lawman here seems to want proof of who you are. I can supply that same. There you are, sheriff. Take a look and then clear out. But, Father, I don't want to marry Bart. You won't force me to. Let's get rid of the lawman and this masked man before we discuss that, Betty. Well, you satisfied with that proof? Yep, I'm satisfied. Step forward, deputy. Right. Lieutenant Benson, I put you under arrest for the murder of Private Simmons and effecting your escape from military prison. You what? I'll take that, Oh, wait, you can't do this. Murder. Here's the warrant to back it. The masked man brought it to me. I'm just serving it. I suspected it, isn't I? I can't believe it. The son of my old friend. You can't take me in for murder. 
Let me explain. You can explain to a court martial. I'm not Bart Benson. Oh, what? Do you hear that? I'm not. Butch and Steve and half a dozen other men around here can prove it. You ain't Bart Benson? Then who are you? Bill Slade is my real name. I I found Benson. Found him dead. Seen his credentials and a letter from you, Colonel. My boys is with me. They'll back up what I say. I ain't done no murder. You came here as an imposter. Yeah, well, anyone would have done the same. Anyone that's as ornery as you might do the same. Please, please don't take me to jail. Very well, Slade. We knew you weren't Bart Benson. The only way to convince the colonel was to make you admit it yourself. Then, then I won't have to go back with the law? Not for Benson, uh, Dunn, you won't. But you'll go back for what Bill Slade done. What? Chiquita saw the murder of Lem. Murder? Lem? Yep. And we already have the confession from Butch and Steve. Got that as soon as we faced them rats with a charge. You hired him for that job because Lem knew who you were. I still can't believe Bart Benson would commit a murder. Take the killer out, Sheriff. You have all you want. Yep. Come on, Slade. You come on. Me. Go get horse ready, huh? Yes, Tyler. I'll be right along. Oh, stranger. How can I thank you? I... I thought you'd be late in getting here. But just who is this man? Colonel, Tonto and I found Lieutenant Benson and also found that his credentials had been stolen. We came this way to try and find the man who stole them. Did Slade kill him? No. He killed himself. He... he did? He brought dishonor on his company. He didn't mean to kill the guard in making his escape, but he did so. When he learned that the man had died, he took his own life and left a note. That note was all there was. The only reason this fellow Slade didn't take the note was because he overlooked it in his hurry to get away with Benson's other papers. I, I feel sorry for the real Lieutenant Benson. My, my old friend's son. But, Colonel, he did die like, like a soldier. <laughs> The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>